process data from dirty to clean. This is course number four of eight in the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. I'm gonna review it right now. You just gotta analyze stuff. Hey everybody, Matt Bratton here with tmbanalytics.com, your analytics career headquarters. We are reviewing course number four of eight in the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. It is called Process Data from Dirty to Clean. And like I started off the last video, I also gave this one a five out of five stars. I thought this was a really good course, uh, even with something as silly as processing dirty data. I think the fact that it hit so close to home, anybody who does analytics knows, look, dirty data is life. <laughs> In fact, I should get a shirt that says that. But seriously, it's a, it's a thing. And being able to clean dirty data, recognize dirty data, deal with all of these things, it is imperative for the court, for life in this career. So let's go ahead and, and, and jump right in. I'm gonna do the quick review. You can see here I've completed the course. This is a six week course. So uh, it's another one of the, on the longer end as far as some of the courses, they've been as short as four weeks, but this one is six weeks and we are gonna jump right into week number one. So what this is talking about is before you clean, check for integrity. Very good advice there. So let's take a look at what this is talking about here. So um, I guess I didn't, I don't know what's going on because it's not marking uh, all the stuff that I've done because I've definitely completed the course. I've definitely gone through and done all of this stuff. So either I got lazy and stopped marking everything or I don't know what else happened, but trust me, I've done it. I, you just saw that I've completed it. So um, again, the very beginning of any of these courses, it's gonna go through the syllabus, it's gonna give you a little quick uh, refresher on where you are in the roadmap and where you're headed, what you've done so far, remind you of why you're doing this, all that good stuff. And uh, then we jump right into some of the content. So maintaining data integrity. Uh, why data integrity is important. I mean, just saying that, you kind of have a sense for, well, of course data integrity is important. If, if your data has no integrity, then what are you doing with it? Not much probably because everybody knows the saying garbage in garbage out. So this is all about making sure that you are not putting garbage into the big analytical machine and ensuring that what you're putting in is actually quality, right? So it gets into compliance. It talks about uh, scenarios for dates and giving uh, common situations where uh, certain data inconsistencies might uh, cause issues for you. I love that it's got this quick reference guide for data constraints and gives you different examples of things uh, to take into consideration. Talks about balancing your objectives uh, as an organization uh, with the integrity of the data, making sure that you're well aligned with your objectives. And uh, this is all, it's, it's important to consider because you got to make sure that data that you have is going to allow, this is like the analysis before the analysis, right? As you, this is a maybe a quick tip for anybody in the analytical space is when you're getting questions, at least this is how my brain functions is when I'm being asked a question or an analytical uh, objective, I don't just think from the perspective of the question being asked. I think about the data that's available. So I'm processing two different lines of thinking while somebody is asking a question. It's number one, do I understand? Do I comprehend the question being asked? And number two, can I address it with the data that's available? Are there issues with the data that's available that are known that need to be overcome? So often when I'm having these interactions with stakeholders talking about requests, I will bring up some of the limitations of the data while we're discussing and offer alternatives and say, look, you know, I, I understand this is what you're looking for. This is what we do have. These are my concerns with that. But what we what we have with more confidence is this. And here's how I think that might be able to help. A lot of this is kind of in a roundabout way talking about that sort of thing. So how to how to make sure that you're coming up with accurate conclusions and uh, dealing with all that. It gets into sample sizes and data, actual data collection, um, what to do when you're dealing with insufficient data, how to know when you can move forward, why uh, various sample sizes are, impo excuse me, are important for different types of, of uh, business problems, all sorts of, of really good tidbits here uh, of best practices that you should be following as you're, you're working through a project. Um, 
It also gives you options for testing data or what to do when there is no data and what are good proxies for data that you wish you had. It talks about how you could use historical data in certain circumstances versus uh, data that's readily available. When should you actually start collecting data versus holding back and going another route, depending on the urgency of the request being made. So all really good things to consider. Uh, lots of optional uh, exercises within this. Um, talks about margin of error and why that's important to understand sample sizes a lot of it it's like statistic type principles that it gets into and anybody who's taken a statistics course probably already had your ears ringing when i'm talking about sample sizes sample collection data margin of error all that kind of fun stuff so that's week number one just kind of prepping you for for what's to come so then we're going to go into week number two all about clean data and here <clears throat> it, it gets into what is dirty data you know it, it gives you examples of its duplicate or outdated or incomplete or inconsistent or incorrect right obviously you need to be familiar with your data in order to even answer these questions right this isn't just something that you assume that something is uh, certain data is a way that it is you don't just assume that your data is good you also don't assume that it's incomplete right you have to be familiar with your data and so it gives you ideas of ways to identify this, different different situations, descriptions, possible outcomes, and what harm it could cause uh, if you're to use that sort of thing. So this is going deeper on the whole garbage in, garbage out idea that, hey, if your data is this type of garbage, then this is the type of garbage that you're going to be delivering to the business. Is that really what you want? Right? So it gets into a lot of that. Uh, it goes into some data cleaning techniques, which is also super helpful. Good to know common, common data cleaning uh, sh pitfalls. It talks about like documenting what your steps are. So documentation, I might be getting ahead of myself, but it does get into um, the importance of documentation, uh, learning. Yeah, you've got like a, a log, how to, how to keep a catalog of not only like the sources and uses of your data, but the way that you are treating your data as you're preparing it for usage, right? All really important stuff here. Um, see if there's anything else here that might be worth showing off. Different data perspectives. Uh, this is just a video, but um, workflow automation. This was also kind of helpful because it, it makes you think about different, uh, different ways that you're you're dealing with the data handling modeling cleaning presenting uh, can you automate it yes no or otherwise should you automate it yes no or otherwise uh, gets into the why so this is also sort of prepping prepping you mentally for what's to come later in this course so week number two was good good for setting the table here week number three cleaning data in sql so now we're we're going back to sql and we're talking about different things that you can do, uh, understanding the capabilities of SQL, um, using SQL as a junior data analyst. So it talks about um, different tasks and things that you might be asked to do, uh, how to count certain things, identify duplicates using SQL. Um, it also talks about why you should be, why you should or probably are using spreadsheets in one instance and what the benefits of using something like SQL might be for that. Obviously, the larger the data set, the more uh, benefit you'll get from using something like SQL uh, that can parse through data much more quickly and uh, than, than a spreadsheet. And it's just generally going to be more reliable because you're giving it specific commands. And as long as you know what you're doing when you're giving those commands, then you're going to feel more confident in the data that is coming out of it. Um, different SQL dialects, it talks about you know what SQL actually is. You know, structured query language and talks about um, MySQL Postgres, uh, all this kind of fun stuff. So this is uh, this is good because these are also common questions that people have is like, hey, I learned MySQL or T-SQL or whatever. Uh, is that how, how hard is it going to be to learn Postgres and things like that? So it kind of gets into the the all of the details behind that and what it what SQL actually is and how those different um, iterations exist and why so that's it's helpful learning there uh, we talk about widely used queries given some more, a lot of video content here practice quiz transforming data uh, debugging SQL code this is uh, 
kind of a fun discussion prompt. I obviously didn't do anything here, but again, now we're reintroducing getting involved, not nearly as pushy as it was early on uh, in the, the the different certificate program courses, but they're they're getting more. Um, I think they're prefacing the idea that they're they're hoping that people will start to have more technical, engaging discussions in the forums. And then it gets into the practice quizzes and all that fun stuff. So um, weekly challenge. And I've obviously done all of these things because, again, I passed the test. Uh, what did I just do? Cleaning data. Yeah. Um, so view and report your cleaning results. So here, uh, I guess I wasn't as laid, lazy here and actually got some stuff. I still think this is super weird that it's not showing my progress because I definitely went through all this stuff. Um, verifying uh, reports, final step in data cleaning, data cleaning verification checklist. So this one was good. I again, I'm a big, I'm learning through this process that I'm a big fan of the the reading materials, like the actual tangible um, lists of things that I can skim and look at. Videos, it's like you're you're on you're on the roller coaster and you got to be along for the ride, even at two x speed. I get impatient because there's specific information that I'm being told that I'm going to get. And uh, I guess maybe at this point, because a lot of this is refresher, I'm I'm personally less motivated to watch a video, but I love reading the readings. I think that there's a lot of, it's like very, very action packed, very dense reading material that I, I really just enjoy uh, taking all the stuff. It's like a, a pile of cheat sheets, really. So um, this one, it just talks about the, the goal of your project, making sure that you understand the business problem, confirm the goal, verify the data is there, and yada, yada, yada. So lots of good stuff here. Um, some more practice quizzes, capturing and cleaning changes. So this is where we get into change logs. It shows you how to you know go into different spreadsheets or it's particularly Google Sheets, review change, uh, change history so you can go back to it. It even shows you how to do it in Microsoft Excel. In BigQuery, you can look at history, iterations, things like that all very helpful and then it also talks about um, you know creating your own change logs making sure that you've got version control history uh, important things to keep in mind here so that everybody understands what you've done why you've done it uh, this gets into some advanced functions about uh, different syntax changes between Excel uh, and Google Sheets different functions what they do uh, pulling data from multiple sources and all that jazz, all all good things to know. And then you got your weekly challenge. I, if if it sounds like I'm being somewhat repetitive, uh, it's because that's kind of how I review the stuff. <laughs> it just it uh, it it kind of goes through the motions. I like to focus on the reading. I will highlight the videos, and then you talk about the quizzes and some of the the more hands on stuff. So week number five was optional, uh, was week number six is the course challenge, but um, week number five was optional, but adding data to your resume. So you noticed in the, if you watched or if you haven't watched, but course number three, I talked about at the end that there was an, an optional uh, final section that gets into, you know, your LinkedIn profile, building your personal brand, all of that. So this one here, the optional course is talking all about, um, you know your resume and getting all this stuff so this is how it's it's slowly introducing also the 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 professional angle of this certificate program where it's supposed to help you to prepare yourself for getting a job or becoming more employable in this particular space so they're they're adding in these optional modules so that you're you're looking at your linkedin and you're getting it up to date you're learning how to network and send messages in this course here they're talking about how to get your resume updated and uh, making sure that you understand what a data analyst resume might look like and they've got very good video content here going through all of those things um, uh, career con resources on youtube so it talks about different resources and areas where you can go uh, watch different videos on youtube making sure that those are available making sure that you're highlighting your experiences again all of this feedback is, is is solid. If you actually go through this step by step, they're giving you really good information, really good insights into things that you should take into consideration when you're you're getting your profile built out as an analyst. All right, exploring your areas of interest. Uh, where does your interest lie? Share resume best practices. Uh, so then it it 
asks you to go into the forums and start talking about some of this stuff. And then last is week six, where it's just the course challenge. Um, you can see here, uh, just basically getting ready for it and the video and then your the quiz. So that was it, the week six. Uh, it was, I don't know that I would actually call this a six week course, in fact, because the first four weeks was all the content and then week five was your optional thing on the resume and then week six is just the challenge. So eh, it, it's kind of, I, I don't necessarily feel like I was um, shorted anything <laughs> in particular. Uh, just an observation, just just making an observation there of, of what that what that's all about. So anyway, uh, that was it. That was the processing data from dirty to clean course number four of the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. Uh, very important topics, very uh, good coverage of those important topics, good exercises. The quizzes were challenging and uh, very, very thoughtful as the way that they were set up. So uh, I gave it again, five stars. I thought it's important, uh, very valuable information here. So that's all I got. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, go ahead and throw them down in the comments below. And I'd love to hear from you guys. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching.